Welcome, market participants, to another Three Things in Credit. I'm Van Hesser, Chief Strategist at KBRA. Each week, we bring you three things impacting credit markets that we think you should know about. And I'll have to tell you, it was a big week. FOMC, Apple earnings, jobs report, the Milken Conference. My favorite comment coming out of that event comes from Katie Koch, CEO of TCW, who observed that people, quote, look a little too happy here, unquote. Adding that, we all get to be geniuses when money is free. Love the candor. In case you couldn't deduce where TCW's sentiment is, it is looking for a medium to hard landing. Reason to be a little less happy. All right, this week, our three things are, one, regional banks. How irrational is the selling pressure? Two, bank exposure to commercial real estate. It's often overstated and misunderstood. And three, home builders. Is this a cyclical or growth story? All right, let's dig a bit deeper. Regional banks under pressure. Jamie Dimon said we are past the crisis. Jay Powell said we are past the crisis. We are not past the crisis. Markets smell blood in the regional bank water. Three fairly large banks have failed, but none of them were really mainstream commercial banks. Silicon Valley Bank, the highly volatile venture capital industry, grew wildly and catastrophically mismanaged interest rate risk. And, oh yeah, the regulatory response to this problem, hiding in plain sight, was woefully deficient. Signature Bank, according to board member Barney Frank, failed because regulators targeted the bank to send a very strong anti-crypto message. While Signature was a crypto-friendly bank, its funding reliance on large, uninsured deposits and its concentrated customer base made it vulnerable to a run in the wake of SVB's problems. First Republic Bank shared a reliance on large uninsured deposits with SVB and SBNY. Its business of making low-cost mortgages to the affluent in the hopes of building a more profitable, enduring relationship via wealth management over time proved flawed as its depositors fled in droves in the wake of the Silicon Valley and Signature failures. All three narrowly focused, grew at super-fast rates, and were reliant on large uninsured deposits for funding. So why are more mainstream regional bank stocks coming under such strong selling pressure? The answer is because markets smell blood in the water as a result of two things. One, the threat introduced by your smartphone in the form of the ability to move massive amounts of deposits with a few keystrokes. And two, the ability for stories, real or unsubstantiated, to go viral. The speed at which a bank's credit story can deteriorate also has implications for two important elements supporting bank credit worthiness. One, it reduces the time in which regulators can intervene to preserve franchise value. And two, it reduces the likelihood of a strategic buyer emerging to acquire the bank as a going concern as there simply might not be enough time to perform the requisite due diligence. So where is the fire break between highly idiosyncratic stories and more mainstream regional banks? In a nutshell, banks need to demonstrate that available liquidity convincingly covers uninsured deposit. Banks will need to detail interest rate risk, especially after the Fed's raise-a-thon. Banks need to detail diversification on both the asset and liability side. Push back against the tide with facts. It usually works. And it would be helpful to know that regulators and policymakers are committed to moving quickly on much-needed updates to its oversight function especially with regard to strengthening stakeholder confidence in the face of Twitter runs. For more on this, please see my research piece out today on KBRA.com. All right, on to our second thing, bank exposure to commercial real estate. So topping just about everyone's list of risks affecting investor sentiment at the moment are three things. The Fed's tightening initiatives, the state of commercial real estate, particularly the office market, and the health of community and regional banks, which we just talked about. All three of these, of course, are related. One part of this has been misrepresented, the degree of risk smaller banks have to commercial real estate. It is often reported that smaller banks are a leading source of financing for commercial real estate and, as a result, are unduly exposed to falling CRE values. In the aggregate, this is simply not true. Here's how to think about it. Banks, all banks, hold $1.7 trillion, or 39% of the $4.5 trillion market of income-producing commercial mortgages. This total excludes owner-occupied CRE, 
which are really bank loans to businesses that just happen to have property as collateral. These loans are underwritten as commercial loans, and the lower risk of these loans reflects that. Now, according to the Mortgage Bankers Association, the top 25 banks ranked by asset size hold about one-third of the bank total, or about 12% of the total market. That leaves smaller banks, some 4,700 institutions, holding 27% of the market. As a percentage of assets, CRE is 19% in the aggregate of smaller bank total assets. Office properties represent just 3% of smaller bank assets. My guess is that if you are a casual reader of the financial press, you would be surprised to see CRE exposure among smaller banks come in at that low level. Now, it goes without saying that there is a range of exposure across 4,700 institutions, so this is not to say that CRE is not something to worry about. But it is important to know that the financial system will not be materially impacted by CRE exposure as it was back in the late 1980s and early 1990s. All right, on to our third thing. Home builders. Amidst all the gloom and doom, at least in the headlines, if not risk markets, one bright spot has been home builders who have outperformed the broader equity market smartly over the past six months, returning 30% versus 6% for the equal weighted S&P 500. Similarly, credit performance for the sector has performed well, with bellwether names tightening strongly since 2022's recent wides. At work have been two cross currents, economic slowdown, against what has always struck us as a hard-to-explain chronic shortage of homes. All the distortions in the economy brought about by the pandemic have impacted the home-building story in a number of ways. Surging, stimulus-fueled household wealth and a lack of supply, constrained in part by shortages of labor and materials, drove affordability to record low level. Then, the spike in interest rates created an air pocket of demand, as buyer expectations had to adjust. And now we are facing recession. Buying conditions for houses has hit an all-time low, with data going back to the 1950s, according to the University of Michigan's surveys of consumers. So conventional wisdom tells us this is not a time to be invested in cyclicals like home builders. But we keep coming back to the chronic shortage of housing, estimated to be 2.3 million units if we include multifamily home options. Supply of available inventory is plummeting. The number of housing units in Q1 that were vacant and available for sale or rent totaled 15.1 million units, hovering near a 20-year low. Vacant homes for sale, more relevant to the home builder group, was 662,000, the lowest since the fourth quarter of 1979. And for context, this is about 30% of the level we had entering the GFC. So with supply chains greatly improved, we expect supply to come back into balance with demand, even in the face of a deteriorating economy. Home builders look to be a solid, less cyclical core holding at this point. So there you have it. Three things in credit. One, regional banks. Regulatory uncertainty is contributing to the selling pressure. Short-term and longer-term reform is needed. Two, bank risk to commercial real estate. It's typically overstated for the vast majority of the banks. And three, home builders. We like this as a core holding. As always, thanks for joining us. Don't forget to check in on KBRA.com for our latest research and ratings reports. See you next week. Hello, listeners. Join me, Van Hesser, KBRA's chief strategist for in-depth conversations with credit experts in my new monthly podcast, Leading Voices in Credit where I'll interview market professionals on the latest trends in credit markets. That's Leading Voices in Credit with Van Hesser. Subscribe now.